All right, here comes the first blocks. All right, I got this. Oh, wow, my stream's really popping off right now. Everyone's in chat. They love me, they love me, they love this. All right, all right, come on, I got this. I got this, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I love me some Tetris. Ooh, this is getting a little stressful right now. There's too many people watching. I'm choking up, I'm choking up. So perhaps I wasn't meant to be a professional Tetris streamer. But you know what I can do? I can 3D print Tetris blocks. Let's look at how to do that now. We have the basic Tetris shapes. Uh, did you know they have names? For example, the L-shaped one is called Ricky. I'm going to try and draw some of these in isometric. So I've got my picture here and then my drawing here. Let's start with the easy one. Let's try this two by two square, which is called Smash Boy. All right, I'm going to pick a point to start, and I'm going to move one, two. All right, that'll be my bottom. Now I'm going to go up one, two. All right, I have to stay parallel. Um, the bottom edge and the top edge of Smash Boy are parallel. So my lines on my asymmetric drawing also have to be parallel. Edges, the vertical edges are parallel as well. All right. Now, I don't know how thick Tetris blocks are, but I'm going to assume they're one block wide. Just like that, I have modeled Smash Boy. Let's try another. I'm going to try the Tiwi, which is this kind of T-shaped one. Across the bottom, I see it's one, two, three long. So I'm going to draw one, two, three. At this corner, I need to go up. And in isometric drawings, up, you go up. Now I need to go back towards the middle and parallel with the bottom. So my isometric drawing is going to go back towards my origin that I started at and also go parallel. I'm going to want to go up. Up is still straight up. And then again, parallel to go over. And I can kind of see where this was going. All right, now to pull it into 3D, I'm going to fill in the rest of my boxes. And I am left with the Tiwi. Excellent. I think I'm done. I'm ready to do some 3D modeling. I'm now at Tinkercad.com and I'm going to click Create New Design. This is going to take me to a brand new workplace. There's a few things I want to point out first. Down here is the snap grid. This is how far you can move your blocks before they snap together. At 1.0 millimeters, I feel like I can move this anywhere and it's pretty smooth. For this project, I'm actually going to change it to 5 millimeters, which means it can only snap every 5 millimeters. It now jumps around a lot more. This is going to make it easier for me to align everything together. I can bring blocks out by clicking and dragging them onto my work surface. I can get rid of a block I don't want by either clicking it and hitting the backspace key or the trash icon. If I click on a block, we can see that there are some white boxes in the corners that show up. These allow me to change the size of the tool I brought out. If I want to look around my drawing, I can either click the navigation cube and drag it, or I can click the side. If you're at the side and you want to get to a different side, you can click the arrow. If you're using a mouse, 
you can also right click anywhere and then drag the world around. If you want to zoom in, you can do that using the zoom in key. Or if you have a mouse, you can use the middle mouse to zoom in. If we zoom in enough, we'll notice that this cube has converging lines. This is like how we draw in two point and one point perspective. This is what makes things look 3D. There's a button down here called orthographic. And this is a lot like isometric drawing, where lines that are parallel stay parallel. Notice this grid in the background. If I switch to perspective view, the boxes close to me are larger than the boxes further away. And I feel like we could figure out the vanishing point by following these lines to where they meet. As soon as we click orthographic view, all the boxes are the same size, regardless of how far away they are from the camera. And all the lines are parallel. I'm going to work in orthographic view because it's very easy for me to align objects. I'm going to try and make the L block in Tetris. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this block. I need to make it smaller. If I left click on the white corner box, then these measurements will stay up. I want to be very precise. So I can, I'm going to left click the number. Now I can type in 10. I want these to be 10 millimeters on a side. I've done the left and the right side, but how do I do how tall it is? If I click the box, there is a small white box in, at the top middle. By clicking that and then clicking the number box, I can then type in whatever I want. This box is now 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. I want to make more of these boxes. I want this cube to be my basic building shape. I can do that by coming up here to the copy tool. If I click copy and then I click paste, I will get a second identical box. I can click and drag it and notice how it snaps every five millimeters. This is because I set the snap grid. If I had not done this and done it at something really small, it might have been challenging for me to align it perfectly straight. And I could zoom in, but I would still have a hard time doing it. And that doesn't look very good. Instead, selecting something like five millimeters, while it gives me less specific control, it means that these shapes perfectly line up. I'm going to click paste again and get another shape. One more paste. And I can maneuver them around until I have the Tiwi shape from Tetris. If I want to keep it all together, I can click Group. Now this is one solid shape. Clicking and dragging them means they all move together. I can also change the color. If I want it to be yellow, or dark blue, or even white. This model is now ready to be 3D printed. I'm going to make the rest and then 3D print myself a collection. 